Football 1982. Brought to you by Coors, made for the way you really like to drink beer. And by Toyota, who reminds you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. day to you from Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto. I'm Pete Liebengood along with Stanford head coach Paul Wigan and the atmosphere here today is none like it was a week ago when Stanford upset the Washington Huskies. This time Stanford comes up on the short end of a 41-27 score to the University of Arizona and Paul I guess it just all came apart in the fourth quarter there. Four touchdowns. It really did. You know we were playing a, a pretty solid football game up to that point. I'm not so sure we ever got our offense on a roll. I think we were grabbing at things. One of our Actually, one of our, our scores came off of a defensive interception by Vaughn Williams. So uh, we weren't really rolling well from that side of the football. I, I never felt that in the game. But I, I think what happened in the fourth quarter, without question, all of the mishaps uh, just turned, turned the momentum in the game. We couldn't change it. It was, it was really ends up being a disaster. Probably one of the most disappointing losses or maybe the most disappointing loss that I have felt since I've been here at Stanford. That was... Uh, it's a good football team that we played today. There's no question about that, but the fact that we lost it in the manner that we lost it is very disappointing. So where do you go from here now? Smarting from this loss, it's UCLA, a very tough UCLA ball club next week. You're into that same position you were a couple of weeks ago, I guess, was to really get everybody's psyche turned in the other direction. Well, that's a, that has a lot to do with it. The thing is, I've said from the start, and the thing I'm disappointed about is I really like this football team. I really do, and I don't like what happened today. But I like this team, and I think the things I like about this team will have this team prepare hard and be ready to go against UCLA this next week. It's a big game for us. It's always a natural rivalry, and I, I really feel they'll bounce back. I, right now, I'm down. The players are down. Everyone's down. But, you know, they, they, the resiliency of these young people is, is, is great, and you'll see them bouncing back. So I, I think that you'll see a, a heck of a football game down in the Rose Bowl this next weekend, and, and uh, I really see our guys bouncing back. After watching here and looking your eyes when you say you think they'll be ready next week, I think you're right. I, you got me believing you anyway. Stanford on the day started out uh, by taking the lead over Arizona on a field goal by Mark Harmon. Then it was Arizona that got things together in one of their big plays on the afternoon. Tonicliffe, the quarterback. Griffin and Johnson, the running backs. Anderson and Ward, the wide receivers. That is Ward in motion. Here is the pitch to Johnson. This time. And he's got a big opening. He may take it all the way. Look at that speed. He's going to outrun the entire Stanford defense. Vance Johnson breaks it big. 79 yards. Touchdown, Arizona. Vance Johnson trying to equal his yardage total of last year all in one play here. Just a power eye sweep to get good force by the quarter. Kevin Baird, over pursuit by the inside linebackers, opens up a big gap. And Vance Johnson with that world-class speed is just off to the races. He's going to outrun everybody. Both clubs then exchanged punts, and then Stanford got the football and went on a 78-yard scoring drive. Delway goes back to pass, looks left over here for Tolliver, and he's got him. Good timing pattern on the part of both of them that time. Robbins ran Tolliver out of bounds. Larry Smith trying to figure out how you stop number seven and company. Arizona ran a strong side blitz, leaving man coverage on the weak side. That enabled Tolliver to work one-on-one -on -one with the corner, and it's very difficult to cover receiver man coverage, especially with a quarterback like Elway. Elway now with 90 yards to his credit. Ken Williams, the freshman, is foot to one side. Elway's looking in his direction, now goes the other way. Gets it off instead to Vincent White. Jitterbug loses one man and gets to about the 22-yard line. I think it was Robbins that missed him the first time. Ricky Hundley is the one who ended up with the tackle. Boy, Vince White is just leaving white jerseys laying all over the field. He is really sharp today, as you said earlier. Good to have him back in full health. Vincent White has a unique running style. It is not aesthetic. It just gets the job done. It's like a little scooter out there. It takes a little tiny 
tiny steps and stop on a dime and move on a dime. First and ten, Stanford. This is Dotter again from going back to its wanted ground game. And has been so effective though, in the last couple of weeks. I say that with a little bit of a laugh in my voice because uh, prior to Washington State, when they went for about 240 yards on the ground, Stanford hardly knew what the run was. Second and six for the Cardinal. Last time down here, the Arizona defense got real tough. First and goal from the five, and they held Stanford to a field goal. Got a stunt onto the Wildcats. Elway hangs in there. Intercepted. We just had to wait to see if Neely could ever come up with a football. It was hanging in the air. It was intended for the tight end, Chris Dressel. And again, Neely, I think, just couldn't hang on to the Elway bullet. You see John Forsman's pattern. There's man underneath coverage. Dressel, who's the ten receiver, is being covered effectively by the linebacker. He overthrows it. Neely, I think, was looking at a lot of green and one man, Chris Rose, out in front of him to beat for about a 99-yard return. Tony Neely with two interceptions this year, a senior from Morgan, Pennsylvania. Probably the best athlete on the team. Arizona had, at the end of last season, or it was in the spring, a superstars, team superstars contest, and Neely was the winner, the top athlete. Elway throwing over the middle for his tight end. Touchdown. Well, Neely almost got it the play before. This time, Dressel got it. Touchdown, Stanford. Arizona's going to put both its safeties right up the middle. That leaves a long way for the corner to come back and cover the tight end man-on-man. -man. Quick release by Dressel. It opens wide up. It's the one weakness of the defense that your safeties can't put the pressure on. Elway read it and hit Dressel. Great read. Touchdown, Stanford. In fairness to Neely, it was not he that was burned. He was just a safety valve back there, and he tried to make the save. It was not his man. Arm and arm to convert. Stanford has reclaimed the lead on an Elway to Dressel touchdown pass. It is 10-7 Stanford. We've got 313 left in the opening quarter. 127, you say what defense, but there was some defense out there today and some outstanding plays, and I call in my defensive specialist here, my partner Gordy Saracino. Uh, certainly the play of Vaughn Williams has to be looked at as one of the high points for Stanford in this ball game. Well, when you mention the name Vaughn Williams on defense, one thing comes to mind, consistency. He was an all pac camp performer as a sophomore last year, and he's proven to be a legitimate All-American candidate this year. One of the best safeties in the country. He had a big play, play after play all year and again today. Of course, the big one was his interception, 35-yard return for a touchdown in the first quarter. Third down and six for the Wildcats. Kind of to throw again. Over the middle, picked up by Williams, and he may have six. It's a lineman to beat. Touchdown. Well, just as I called Griffin's play picture perfect. Stanford's in a three-deep zone. Williams is playing the middle. Griffin is looking just to get his wide receiver curling up. Williams playing in the center field position. Timed that all the way. He was coming full speed and had his eyes on that football. It had his name written all over it. No one to beat. Just a picture perfect play to repeat it again. So we have to amend the figure we just gave you a moment ago. Stanford now with 20 interceptions on this year to lead the Pac-10. Vaughn Williams is third, and it is a touchdown, 35 yards. On the return, Vaughn Williams has put the Cardinal a little further out front. Harmon with the extra point. So uh, that was the first time that Tunnicliffe has been intercepted in four plus games. And when it happens, it happened for the distance. And Williams takes it in for the touchdown, and Stanford leads it 17 to 7. With Stanford up 17 to 7, Arizona got it cranked up and went 74 yards to get things close again. Looks like we're going to get a pass interference call. 
There it is against Stanford. Oh, watch it again. Keep an eye on number 87. He's trying to come up on a rollout. He's going to get good pressure there. See, Williams was blitzing the safety. Grissom's on the coverage. The only thing I can see, you can't pick anything up there. It looks like either Grissom or Hutchings was holding the receiver. Is either Grissom away from the play holding his man? Well, Hutchings may have got the back end of Goble's jersey before he got the play there. It's hard to tell. At any rate, it is first down right at the goal line. On a cliff. And we've got an Arizona touchdown. Folks here aren't crazy about it. It's Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto. But Arizona has crept back into this football game. This Toyota Corolla has had 98 drivers in the past 18 months. It's owned by the Dollar Rent-A-Car franchise of Long Beach, California. Some of its drivers were good. Some weren't. But this Corolla took them all on, and it's still going. You know, for my dough, Toyota Corolla is the best, because it gives me the least, whoa, trouble. Corolla. Until now. If you wanted money market yield and liquidity... Both put Stanford on top 20 to 13, and both teams, at least offensively anyway, took naps in the third quarter, and it wasn't until the fourth quarter that Stanford got it going again. There's no way to throw. Has Tolliver all alone at 25. He gets to the 22-yard line in the arms. Of whom? Tony Neely, number 22. Arizona in its own defense here. Tolliver goes down and just run a little hookup pattern underneath the zone, catch the ball, splits the two safeties, picks up an extra yard. Good discipline pattern run by Tolliver. Tolliver with his fourth reception on the day. And you're looking at this Sports Illustrated cover boy. John Elway gets it off to Kalana Park, one on one. And nice job by the Wildcats. All-America candidate Ricky Hunley. Boy, he showed it there. That's a tough spot, and he won. It really is. One-on-one -on -one with a linebacker and a running back out in open field is very difficult. And the great players can make these plays. And you'll see a great one here. Hunley is going to come up with the fullback park one-on-one, -on -one, keep his balance, and trip him up. Good play by Hunley. Second and 19 for Stanford. John Elway now just four short of Mark Herman's career total NCAA record. Here's a blitz on, and uh, Stanford's working against the blitz. They go to draw to Vincent White. He's got a touchdown. I don't know, Gordy, if that was an audible or not, but somebody in a Stanford offense, we would assume, saw it coming because on the blitz, they went with a draw. You're going to see Randy Huntley, the All-American, come blowing up the middle. They pick him up with a little quick trap. White comes up, steps over one man, and is off to the races, into the end zone. Touchdown, Stanford. As you say, a perfect call for a perfect defense. Mark Harmon with the extra point attempt. He has missed only once in his career here at Stanford. That was last week. Oh, almost got it blocked, too. But it is good. And the Stanford Cardinal has gone out to a 27 to 13 lead with 12.46 left in the football game. That was Vincent White's, well, no, I was gonna say, prior to this game, his longest run from scrimmage. Uh, today, I think Vincent has checked in with a longer run from scrimmage. Yeah, Vance Johnson, yes, Vincent has a 27 yarder. Vance Johnson gets out of bounds there. Johnson with a big day on the ground. Charles Hutchings gets the tackle. Well, we saw Arizona go to the air there with 12 minutes and 39 seconds being down by a couple touchdowns. They're going to have to start to open up their offense a little bit. Second and seven for Arizona. The football at the 32-yard line. This is Holland missed by one man. Kevin Baird at the 37-yard line. I think it was Wyman who had the initial hit but couldn't hang on. 
seen the replay, the head off the deep tail back in the eye, makes a little bit of a cutback. You see Wyman missing there. You're gonna see Barrett come up with a strong straight arm into Barrett's face, but he managed to hold on and take the runner down. Good straight arm by Holland. We give credit to Barrett for holding on, that's difficult. Holland was the thorn on the side of the Cardinal a year ago when these two teams played in Arizona round. He threw for a touchdown pass, 42 yards on a halfback option to won the game. Here's Tunnicliffe throwing for his tight end all alone. It's Keel. He's going to score. And just like that, 63 yards later, the Arizona Wildcats are right back in it. You're going to see no one within 20 yards of Keel. Tunnicliffe goes straight back. Got a blitzing inside linebacker, Soderlund, which opens up no one near Keel at all. He's just going to catch that football and have nothing but real estate to go into the end zone. There had to be a cross-up in the coverage. With a blitzing inside linebacker, you usually go to a man coverage, putting the free safety on the tight end. For some reason, there was a cross-up there, and he went just wide open down the field. So both teams have been hurt by the blitz on big plays here in the final quarter. Zendejas with the extra point, and it is good. And right now, we are at 27-20. Stanford. And Gordian, looking back at this football game, I have to think that that pass play to Keel for the touchdown was perhaps the key play in the football game and the turnaround. Would you, would you agree? 100%. Stanford had just scored, opened their lead up to a good margin. Arizona comes right back with a long touchdown play to Keel. It enabled them to get the momentum and to stick with their game plan on the next drive, which led to the tying score. 6.26 left in the game. It was at this juncture last year that Arizona scored the touchdown and won it for him. Paul Wigan, Lancey right now. He was very good. Sir. Really been pushed on this drive. Third and two. Crowd getting into it. Holland, the first down and close to a touchdown as he gets to the one a gain of almost 11 yards on the play Vaughn Williams made the saving tackle he had up deep man in the eye Griffin leading the blocking up front that was a nice block springs home he gets out saving tackle by Williams there right on the goal line as Holland stretched out trying to get the ball over that gold line question is what do you do if you're Larry Smith right there once you score here do you go for the one pointer or do you go for two? Remember, Zendejas has missed one, or had one blocked, I should say. Holland is there. But he fumbles the football, but it was already across. The indication had gone up. He was bumped, stopped, and then surged forward for the score. So now it's interesting. And I see Zendejas on the field. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen a single point. Straight power handoff, number 38. Redmond leading the way. And Holland pounds the ball over. So it appears right now, anyway, as if Arizona, with Zendejas the kick, is going to go for the tie, 27 all. Remember, he has had one block. Otherwise, Arizona would be on top right now. And he hits it, and we're brand new with 535 left in the game. 27 all. side right now crucial series for both teams the victor of this series may be the winner of this football game Stanford was up 27 13 at one time and that drive of 72 yards has even it up Dejas to Williams Williams on the fly catches the ball gonna come out with it tries to reverse his field fumbles the football and who's got it it could be it is the Wildcats at the two. Big play. Tremendous break for the Wildcats of Arizona. Who's on the football? Number, let's see. Number, looks like 36. We'll take another look that at the That would be kickoff. Brian Evans, a defensive back. You say Williams takes it on the run, brings it out from three yards deep. 
Gonna get a nice hit put on him here by number 23. This is Lyndon Brown. Brown, and there you're gonna see the ball bound towards the end zone with the Wildcats diving on it. Some may second guess Williams for bringing the ball out. This one will not. He always brings it out and generally successful. 346. All the time left. Paul Wigan can do nothing about changing the score other than defending it here and trying to keep it where it is. All right. Here we go. Gonna run it. Look out. Watch for the option. He throws for Tonicliffe, the quarterback. Touchdown. Oh, they pulled one out of the back of the book. That is a brilliant call by the Arizona Wildcats. Coach Larry Smith, I've got to give a lot of credit to pull a call like that. No one looking for it. Arizona State fairly conservative. You're going to see the pitch out to Holland. Tunnicliffe is going out of the backfield. There's no one there watching the quarterback. He's all alone, executed perfectly. Touchdown, Wildcats. The Cardinal is in trouble. Stanford had one more shot at getting back in the football game, but John Elway was intercepted, and then Arizona went in to take it in for yet another touchdown. That man, Holland, with the score. Final 41 to 27. Arizona now 5 2 and 1 in the season. Stanford dropping its record to 5 and 4. Well, there is always next week. The only problem is next week is UCLA on the Bruins' home turf, but as you heard Paul Wiggins say, we'll be ready for it. Hope you will.